Hello, everyone. Welcome to the online meeting with SWPSC University. My name is Adriana Zalewska. I'm an admissions officer, and I'm here today with very special guests. Uh, we have today Vera Maris, who is a student of English. Hi, Vera. Hello, everyone. There's also with us Milena Nikolic, who is a student of Global Minds program. Hi, Milena. Hello, everybody. There's also with us uh, Suleiman Janate, who is a student of School of Form. Hi, uh, Suleiman. Hello, everyone. If you have any questions during the webinar, then you can ask them in the chat box, uh, which is next to our video. My colleague Dorota Słowinska and Anna Biway uh, will definitely answer all of them. Uh, however, we are here today uh, to answer your questions related to the admissions process and our programs that we offer in English language. We will also tell you about services and supports available to international students at our university. I want to start with um, with that that the admissions process, the uh, admissions for this academic year 2021-2022 opened on the 18th of January, a few months ago. So I would like to talk for a moment about what you can expect from our university this year. We offer uh, preparatory language courses, both in Polish and English language, bachelor studies and of course master studies. You can study either in Polish language or English language. Uh, I strongly encourage you to visit our website because you can find their specific details about programs that we offer, the application process, fees, scholarship, everything can be found there. You can find there, of course, 14 programs that are taught exclusively in English in main campus in Warsaw. As for bachelor's studies, you can choose from psychology, management, design and English studies. English studies are also available with additional language. You can choose from Chinese, Japanese, German, Spanish or Russian. Russian is our very new uh, language, additional language. As for master programs, we offer psychology, uh, psychology uh, of global mobility, management program and English studies. Those are the programs that we offer. Uh, however, now let's talk about admissions process, which is the most important part. If you have already chosen a program that you're interested in, then the first step is to fill out the online application form in our system, where you have to upload scans of necessary documents. Uh, there are a few documents that are necessary. However, three most important ones are, first of all, either your secondary diploma for the bachelor studies or bachelor degree with the transcript of records for the master studies. It also has to be with the certified Polish or English translation. The second document that is important uh, is a proof of English or Polish proficiency. If you don't have the necessary documents, then you may sit for the Skype interview uh, where our lecturer will estimate your level of language. This option is um, available for all progr programs except English studies. Um, if you apply for English studies, then you have to either provide us an English certificate or you can sit for the Google Meets uh, entrance exam. It won't be interview, it will be an exam. The third very necessary document uh, also for visa procedure is health insurance or declaration of participation in Polish national healthcare system. Uh, if you don't want to buy right now the uh, health insurance, then you can uh, sign the statement, which is available uh, in our online application platform. The very important part um, are entry and entry exams. Uh, keep in mind that if you, while applying you for a specific program, you might have to sit for, for such exam. An example, if you apply for master uh, program in psychology or design, then you will definitely have to go through the entrance exam. You can check our website to sp see specific requirements for uh, programs and dates uh, for the exam. So now that all of your documents are verified and necessary interviews or exam, exams have positive results, you will be required to pay the tuition fee, at, le at least the first installment of the tuition fee, and upload a confirmation of payment to your online application form. So this is roughly the, the admissions process. It might seem to be a lot, but trust me, it's not. Everything is in the online application form. All steps are, um, are written down, so there shouldn't be a problem. 
Now that we've gone through the offer and the application process, well, we cannot forget that we have some special guests today with us who have already gone through all the steps of the admissions process. Vera, do you remember your application process? It was several months ago. However, maybe you have some uh, advice for candidates what they should pay attention to while when applying for a specific program. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Ada. So uh, my application process was quite stressful and I believe that was mostly because of the pandemic. And so most of the students who are applying now will go to similar situations as I did. So actually, before applying to SWPS, I, I had a lot of um, other options on the table and I was considering other countries as well. And one of the main issues was that the application process was hard. It was difficult. It was a struggle. It was hard to reach out to universities because of the pandemic. So emails were delayed and there were no clear responses. And that's where I have to give props to SWPS because the website was truly that key element to help me and to you know, give me some comfort in a way as a first year, as a rookie, right? And um the website was was the main factor in in you know uh, attracting me to SWPS, and so um, I I found that the most important was that as you mentioned, although it is a, a lengthy process, it is everything is very clear. So all the documentation, and like in other institutions, everything is very transparent. So from tuition fees which are sometimes hidden and you have to reach out and get a brochure and, you know, email this and that. Everything is on the website. And so what my uh, suggestion would be is that even if you feel like that's not enough for you and uh, even if that feels overwhelming, you have to and you I encourage you to reach out to the, the admissions office because they were extremely helpful with me. And my situation was also different because although I come from Portugal, I had a, um, a high school diploma from the UK. So this made my eligibility um, process a bit uh, confusing for me. And uh, Ada and uh, and the rest of the admissions uh, office were extremely helpful in in guiding me through the whole whole process. So fast replies even during the pandemic, it was it was truly amazing, and it was one of the key factors why I'm here today. Thank you. That's really kind. Well, as Vera said, we are always here to, to help our candidates. So if you have troubles with the admissions process and website, then we are more than happy to help you. Suleiman, I want to ask about your admissions process because it looked a little different. And as you've applied for School of Foreign Program, could you please tell us about your admission steps, about online exam and portfolio and how you prepared for it? All right, like uh, for design studies, we have like in design studies, industrial design in English uh, language. So when you want to apply it, generally uh, you need to prepare. Most of in most of the schools also is, is similar. You need to prepare a portfolio, which shows what you are capable of and what you did till now. The uh, for the for showing your experiences basically, and uh, bas uh, in a sense that portfolio shows you and uh, shows that to the people who are looking at it, who you are, and it should reflect your personalities as well as your skills. And like after preparing and sending the portfolio, in three days, uh, you are getting like exam. The, generally, it happens via Skype or the uh, Google Meet. And like it doesn't matter wherever you are, in different country or in Poland or anywhere in world basically, if you have the if you have the connection with internet, you can just take the exam, which is uh, actually not like hard at all because the exam all about your portfolio. Which means if you have done something and if you are presenting it, they ask you to okay, you present it on the paper or on the PDF, but please tell us about it, how you did, how you did it, and uh, what was the process about that. 
So in that way, they understand uh, the level of your uh, skills, in a sense. And uh, that's the whole exam, actually. And one important fact here, sometimes when you call portfolio, people think there should be like a lot of drawing sketches in it. Is nothing like that at all. Like you can put your, if you have any experience with 3D modeling, just put it inside. If you have some, if you have done something by your hand, if you are a craftsman, you can put that as well inside. Like actually, it like it was kind of a way how I prepared my first portfolio. So, and uh, people who examined me, they really liked it. Like that's all my suggestion about the portfolio. And the rest is very similar to the other faculties and like uh, studies. After replacing the exam, you are uh, giving your required documents and submitting them and uh, waiting for the decision actually, which if you pass the exam, it's, uh, it should be positive in, a, in, in any way. And that's all like, there is no such a like, different thing except the portfolio and examination. And um, that's all. Thank you. Exactly. Uh, well, it's an important thing that you said, Suleiman, that uh, the exam was took via Skype or Google Meet platform. Uh, I have to point out that all our exams and interviews are right now uh, in an online form. Uh, so you can take your exam or interview from all over the world. There, there are no limits. Milena, and I also have to ask about your admissions process because it was also completely different from the others. Can you tell us more about why psychology of global mobility uh, program differs from other fields of studies at SWPS University? Yes, thank you for that question, Ada. And I want to say that I'm happy to be here today for this webinar. Um, so I'm studying Global Minds Psychology Master Program. And it's a bit specific because it is organized between four universities, four European universities. So I can maybe first say a little bit about the admission process and then I can say something more about the program itself. So when we talk about admission process, now I see that it was also different from how other uh, who, students who apply for other programs had it. So this program has its own website and on that website you have enough of information about the whole admission process. For me, it was not stressful. It was very clearly structured on the website how it goes. So at first, it was um, basically administrative procedure where I submitted psychology diploma from my uh, bachelor's with the tra transcript of records. I submitted um, also the English language test. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you have to submit CV and a motivation letter in which you describe why you are the best candidate to be chosen for this program. Uh, I want to emphasize that this program focuses on psychology of diversity. So if you have any experience or any personal characteristics that can contribute, more than welcome to, to really highlight them in your CV and motivation letter. Uh, when it comes, when Ada mentioned before the, that other programs had uh, a requirement for the insurance uh, proof, I think that so when I apply for my program, the program itself was covering because it, it's, the program itself includes this mobility. So you would have to move for at least one semester to another university and thus the, the program itself provides you with uh, a really good insurance that kind of supports you in this process. Uh, after submitting all of the documents, uh, shortlisted candidates go for the interview. I also think that if you don't have a proof of English, it's possible to go through uh, the interview to kind of show that you are capable enough or that you can take courses in English. And after the interview, uh, the committee selects the candidate that can actually be part of the program. I think that most of the details and guidelines are given on the on the website. So uh, for me, it was very like nicely structured. And uh, I also forgot to say that you also need to submit recommendations from professors or prof professional recommendations. I think there was two of them. So it's basically this um, 
kind of typical way of applying for, for a master program, I would say. Yes, definitely. There's nothing scary about that. And also, as Milena said, everything is on our website step by step. And if you have any questions, then we can also write you an email and uh, read down, re write down all those steps. Um, well, as we talk about uh, studies, we cannot um, not mention about the current situation, the COVID-19 and how studying looks like, looks like right now. We receive a lot of questions from you uh, asking about how the next academic year will look like, whether you will be able to study at the university. Well, however, until further notice, all programs except School of Form are held exclusively online and uh, this academic year, this um, this semester, I mean, will definitely continue uh, in online mode. However, we don't know what will happen in October. Uh, there are still a few months until that time, so anything can change. I want to ask our students, of course, how they uh, feel in that situation and how is their experience. Vera, can you describe how it looks like studying online right now and how we as the university manage with this situation, with this new challenge? Of course, so my insight, first of all, will be very different from Milena's or Suleiman's because as a first year student, I never had the experience of a pre-COVID uh, college um, ex experience, right? So. Uh, I I came to to SWPS not knowing what a normal university felt like. However, my brother, who's also a first year student in a different university in Portugal, uh, has shared his feedback on the way they are handling the situation there. And that's when I realized, um, OK, I made the right decision. Uh, <laughs> So I have been having feedback as well from Polish friends who who are having who are struggling with the transition, especially if you have been uh, a student in the pre-COVID era. It it must be hard, but I feel like overall in my class as well. Overall, we are very pleased uh, with the with the platform and what we call virtual university that was created. And I feel like the adaptation was made in a very smooth, clear, so very transparent as well way. Um, and most importantly, the quality was kept, I believe. So I, I don't feel like uh, talking to second year students who had a first year on campus, I don't feel like I'm losing anything just because I have this virtual university, at least in academic terms. So I feel like that the professors were given proper training and it shows. And um, I feel like the university is, is very receptive to feedback as well. So whenever the students feel like there might be a lack of uh, or some sort of misunderstanding. So why does this platform work like this and not like this? I feel like the university is very fast to, to respond and to adapt to the students' needs as well. So I feel like our needs are, are prioritized. And uh, even if there are technical issues with professors who are unable to connect or with internet connectivity, I always feel like I am in a safe space where that will be respected and you know, there will be no, um, so I will not be, um, so I will not be uh, in a way uh, marginalized just because I have, I have gone through this un virtual university uh, year. I, I think, I think I will have no penalties at all. And uh, I had this instinct when I first saw the website that there are that you SWPS is so well prepared in in the digital world, and uh, I think my instinct was right, and that you know having been subjected to to this online learning um, reality uh, for almost a year now, uh, I can guarantee that there's nothing to be scared of, and that. SLPS will do their best to provide you with, with the best academic and social even uh, comfort. 
Yes, uh, I'm also a student of SWPS University. I study psychology, so I can confirm that uh, it's definitely um, that the language, uh, the online learning is definitely a good quality learning. Uh, we changed, switched into the online mode very quickly. At first, it was um, very different, very new. However, we quickly adapted to this new situation. And definitely, if you have any concerns, then you can always contact the lecturer and tell them about your experience, how you feel about the situation, and they will react. Moreover, uh, we use the Google Meets platform. Therefore, there is a possibility to split us in a smaller groups and work uh, 101 uh, in the online mode. So uh, it's it's all virtually, but it's definitely the same thing as, as it was at the university, but of course in an online mode. Um, Suleiman, I want to ask about your experience because in your case the classes are held in a hybrid manner since you're a Google School uh, School of Form uh, student. You had some classes in the workshop at the university building, is that right? Yeah, it is right. Uh, because like in Serial, the design studies in School of Form is experience based and you need to make um, like you need to interact with everything always. Like if you are working on a project, you need to make a prototype or uh, mock-up. So in that sense, uh, or if you are uh, preparing a project, you need to film it. You need to use the photography, you know, uh, studio. So in that sense, we had to use the school always because we don't have like Vera or the Milena. We don't have the normal exams. We don't take exams. We are just getting uh, prepared and finish all the projects and uh, giving some presentations end of the projects. Generally, it's like end of the semesters. So, which means we should be always, not always, but like necessarily in the circle, you know. So, that gives us that uh, the difference from the whole campus. Because when we go to the school, generally it's completely empty. Another school of form is full of students. But of course, like uh, they took care of like all the uh, important things, for instance, we have like international groups and the Polish groups. And if there is like a lot of students in the school building, uh, they adjusted the schedule and adapt very well. So none of the big uh, student groups encounter in the same places. So uh, we don't, we didn't have the same classes or similar classes or even in the same floor sometimes. We didn't have classes at all with the different group, so which was actually safe, and everyone like took uh, like taking care of the conditions which COVID required, like everyone was wearing the mask. Even though we were working in the workshop, for instance, normal capacity of workshop if it's 30, it was 10 at the time, and we had to use the reservation, and they created the reservation system which could help us like. Uh, easily to manage our, our time timing, let's say. Uh, so, as you know, like the uh, school of form was last year in the Poznan. Now we are also in the, in the new building in Warsaw with the whole SWPS family, let's say, because now we are in the campus, and uh, which gives us more joy during the studies because. When you go out, you can just like, right now also some of the studies, uh, people are coming and going out. So we are interacting with the different people as well. So I could say it's nice, <laughs> even though we do a hybrid. Thank you. <laughs> yes, well, your program is very practical. And as you said, it would be uh, very difficult to make projects at home. So you have to be at the university at sometimes and finish those projects. Mm, well, fingers crossed that we can all meet here at the university in October for all programs, not only School of Form. Uh, Vera, I have one question for you, because you mentioned that your brother studies in Portugal right now. So I'm very curious, why did you decide to study in English language abroad instead of in your own country as your brother does? So uh, I am. I was born and raised in Portugal. My mother is Hungarian. So at home, it, diversity was was a very big thing. So especially clash of cultures. I grew up. I grew up with that. And uh, unlike my brother, I was not ready to to stay in Portugal. I 
I had this void. I needed the international experience, uh, even though COVID wasn't the, the most helpful when it comes to timing. But I, I was very set on having an international experience ever since I was in primary school. And um, I was not set, however, on where, okay, so there's a whole world in front of me. Where do I go? Why Poland? And the reason I chose Poland was because I I wanted personally a uh, financial independence. So I knew that I would have to choose a country I could personally afford. And another important aspect, which I think it's uh, s significant to mention for international students is uh, Warsaw has become very, very popular in the eyes of major multinational companies. So it's a very attractive city. It's growing um, very, very uh, intensely when, in terms of economics and uh, even infrastructure. And so the offices are moving, moving to Warsaw. And this means that there is high employ employability to non-Polish speakers as well. So after four months here, I got a job at, at a multinational, which allows me to pay for my own bills. And I am now financially independent. And I, I see this movement, this activity in Poland, the, the companies growing, and, and that's what I wanted to be a part of. So um, another, another aspect in this, more on the academic side, uh, and especially at SWPS, what I notice is that when comparing to, let's say, Germany or the Netherlands, I found that English studies or courses offered in English were not so much diverse. So maybe I wouldn't have design in English, maybe I wouldn't have uh, history in English. And in this case, I saw that there were, in Poland, there's so much diversity and you're really trying to um, so attract people to to all different sorts of interests. And that, that really was important for me. And my passion is languages. So I, I decided that uh, the English course provided by, by SWPS was the one for me. But as I mentioned, uh, another thing that has been uh, impacted by the pandemic, Poland is the perfect geographical location for students who love to travel. So even if it means going back home to Turkey or going back home to Portugal um, or just to travel as a tourist to get to know what's around you, I think Poland is is honestly the best location. And uh, and that's that's why I, I chose Warsaw and that's why I chose SWPS. Well, you've mentioned a few factors uh, which are um, very beneficial. Well, one of the, the most important, I would say, is about a uh, job that you've mentioned. Well, we are often asked whether it is necessary to learn Polish language if you're planning to study English in Poland. The, the answer is no. As you can see, Vera is a living proof that you can get a job uh, while speaking uh, English and other languages non-Polish. Uh, so if you have any problems with uh, getting a job, finding a job, then you can always contact the careers office at our university. They will be more than happy to help you to find a job that suits your interests most. So uh, there are no limits. Uh, very th thank you very much, Vera, for for your uh, for your answer. I want to now go uh, quickly through frequently asked questions, which we get a lot. Apart from question regarding the mode of studies, which is the most common question. We are often asked about a language certificate and I have to once again point out that in order to be accepted you have to, for studies, you have to have at least B2 level of language. For English master program in English studies you have to have C1 level of language. However, it is not necessary to have uh, such certificate. Um, it is of course, this option is available for all programs except English studies. Um, so the interview is very quick and the results are usually available the next day. Uh, however, as I mentioned before, if you apply for English studies, then you must either provide us the certificate or sit for the language exam. 
Um, another very important uh, thing and the common question is how to obtain visa and what documents are necessary for this procedure. Well, once accepted, you will receive all necessary documents for visa procedure. Um, once you receive those, document, those documents, you must contact the consulate or embassy in your country and then they will guide you through this process. Uh, we as the admissions office uh, don't take part in this process. Um, and last but not least, question whether I can apply to studies even though I do not have the diploma yet and the answer is definitely yes. Uh, you can be accepted without your diploma. However, uh, it is very necessary that you upload your final documents as soon as possible. Uh, I would li uh, also like to mention that you can be accepted based on scans of documents. Uh, you don't have to submit them straight away. You can be accepted uh, in an online uh, version. However, uh, in order to finish the admissions process, you have to submit your documents, uh, hard copies to the admissions office upon your arrival to Poland, or you can send those documents by post. If you fail to do so, you won't be able to continue studies. You, you have to fulfill this, this very last step. So um, that will be it about the frequently asked questions. Uh, now let's talk about classes. Um, well, our university is very famous for this practical approach to studying. So I want to ask our students how they feel about that. Uh, Minana, since each student must undergo a student practice during these studies, could you please tell about your experience and where did you do your practice? Yes, so uh, within this two year master program, uh, the third semester is reserved for uh, an obligatory internship. Um, when it comes to choosing an internship, you are free to choose any company or any research institution that fits your interest that is related to the courses that you have been taking in the first year. So personally, as I am aspiring to go into PhD, I wanted to do my internship in a research institution and I have done that in a culture, society and behavior research lab, so it's psychology lab uh, in Norway and I was uh, having a position of a research assistant. I have worked on two different scientific projects that are focusing on psychological well-being of immigrants in Norway and psychological adjustment uh, in relation to biculturalism. Um, however, I want to emphasize that so far the program has made a lot of networking and connections with companies and other research institutes. So the program itself can help you find the place where you want to do your internship, but it's also really open to you that if you want to establish cooperation with whoever, wherever that is relevant to, to your field of studying, then you can do so. Um, so I also I, I can totally recommend if you get into the program and you are thinking about internships, you can feel free to contact either me or any of the current students or previous cohort students to ask about their experiences or the places where they have done their internship so that you can kind of have a broader picture of what do you want and what are your possibilities. Yes, uh, we will send the contact to Milena, Suleiman and Vera at the very end of the webinar in the chat box so you can get in touch with our students. Uh, they will definitely help you with any of your questions and concerns. Suleiman, I want to now ask you about this practical approach of studying as uh, you've mentioned a little bit about the projects and that some of them are made uh, at the university, but could you tell us more how your classes look like? Because I know that for um, that it could be hard to imagine for someone without the experience in a field of design uh, to, to imagine how, how it looks like and uh, your program sounds a little mysterious, so please enlighten us. Okay, let me uh, tell you a bit. For instance, if you don't know anything, like about, uh, because we say that it's practice based, we have the workshops, yes, we have carpentry workshop, locksmith, like, and like uh, a lot of different workshops. So in that sense, when you want to do, and when you do these um, pro prototypes and the like projects, before you go that steps, uh, there are professional people and the professors who teach you uh, 
what you need to do. Basically, if you are even like using a drill, very really amazing tool, they are showing you how to, to operate it and what is like uh, necessary things you t you need to do with it. And later on that, uh, little by little, your field of study starts, including the social and the humanitarian uh, classes. And there were like I'm 30 right now, but at the beginning I am rem I remember that. We had also some psychology classes as well. So because you are going to design the products which uh, people are going to use and uh, they sh it's really important. So you should see from each perspective, from consumer, from the environmental aspects and at the same time the uh, production, let's say mass production view of it. So according to that, you are getting normal classes as well and the lectures. And uh, it's basically not all about the workshops, but at the same time the different lectures. But if you after applying, as I said, like no need to be real nervous about it. Everything will be taught to you step by step. Thank you. Exactly. There is there is no need to be worried. You will be taught everything at at your classes. Well, a similar practical approach can be visible uh, on our other programs. For example, we offer many workshop classes. Um, management program is constant, uh, concentrated on learning through experience. Uh, students uh, learn through workshops, group projects, um, debates, discussions, simulations. So there are few few options to, uh, to implement this practical approach. I want to ask Vera, uh, how about English studies program? How it looks like uh, on your program and could you tell about your practical approach uh, during your studies? Yeah, so, uh, well, the English or any language studies, the English studies program is uh, not as practical as Milena's or Suleiman's, but um, uh, what I wanted to mention, and this also applies to what we started off the the call with and what you mentioned, Ada. So it's important for students applying to to know that there is a program of English studies and then there are several programs of English studies with an extended language. So now we have the new edition Russian, but it could be uh, Chinese, Japanese uh, or German, for instance. And uh, I actually enrolled as a, a student of the English studies with German. Um, and so here's what I didn't know, and here's where the admissions office also helped me out with. So uh, my level of German was already, let's say, a B1. So I already had German proficiency. And what I hadn't realized is that if you're going to enroll in English studies with a specific language, you are expected to be at level zero. So this is something to take into account because what, when you have an extended language, it will mean that you will have that language until your last year, until your last semester. And it also is a lot more time consuming. So you'll have a lot more hours dedicated to the specific language. So if you're taking Chinese and you're already at B1 level, you are going to be having a lot of hours, 90 hours, I believe, in the first semester of a0 to A1 Chinese. So that's important to take into consideration. It will not make your life easier to assume that I'm good at German, so let's let's do the German course. I personally strongly encourage you to choose the program you're passionate about, but I want to tell you my experience with the English studies program with no extended language. There is also a mandatory foreign language. In my case, I chose French. However, the dedicated amount of hours is not as extensive and it doesn't go until the last year. So it's only only two years of, of the foreign language. So I thought that would be important to clarify as well. And um, so I came to learn about both types of studies. And what I can tell you is that you will have so linguistics, so the practical grammar, uh, writing, uh, which will give you the what I believe. And now being a part of the labor market is 
really an essential an essential skill to have so excellency and communication and that's also what we have in the most practical classes so other than the lectures we have are the communication skill classes which even online are are still conducted in a way that i believe truly benefit the students um and of course because it's english studies you will have uh, british and american history as well as literature um and i believe uh, the one thing that was very catchy to me in this in this uh, program was that we have the chance to choose a specialization. So uh, at the second year, we have to choose whether we want to, let's say, um, go on the teaching path. So there's a specialization called teaching English as a foreign as a foreign language, and you have courses specifically designed for that. In my case, I chose business studies, so I haven't had business classes yet, but I will have in the next semester. And I chose business studies because this relates to my current job. Uh, you also have cultural and literary studies. Uh, and if you happen to speak Polish or you are a Polish citizen, you can opt for the translation track as well. So although it seems like it's an English studies program, it's very uh, versatile and flexible and will definitely give you a lot of opportunities in the in the job market. Vera, while, uh, once you're speaking, I want to ask you another question because we have questions from the chat box from Hugo. He wants to know uh, what's the difference between Portuguese university and Polish university educational system? So, hi Hugo. Uh, Hugo, I... I don't want to shoot myself on the foot here because I haven't, I have never been a student at the university level in Portugal. So what I can tell you is my friend's experience and uh, my my experience here in Poland compared to theirs is that, first of all, the amount of international students. Um, I think that Portugal, unfortunately, is still um, mostly focused on rather more traditional, conventional type of education. And uh, I believe that Poland is really thriving when it comes to attracting international students and the diversity, like Milena's program is a proof of that. And, um, and another, another thing I could point out, especially during the pandemic, is that I don't feel like, I don't feel that it's right that my brother has no option but to go to the university even during a pandemic. So he is forced to go even if it's in a hybrid mode. He And he is not doing, you know, a Suleiman's program. He is, he is studying management and uh, economics. So his lectures and classes are not even in, interactive in that way and he's still forced to go to the university which I which is an approach that I don't think um, is very uh, comfortable at this at this time so props to Poland for for giving us that freedom of staying of staying at home until we feel until we feel safe I wish I could tell you more about that and if you write me an email I will make sure to to CC my brother so that he can tell you his his version as well. Yes, definitely. That will be beneficial. Okay, Hugo, so you will receive a, an email at the end of the webinar so we can contact Vera. Uh, I want to talk about the diversity um, group at the university because studying English is studying in a very diverse group of people. And we each year we accept students from over 60 different countries. So you can imagine uh, how many countries meet at one classes. I want to ask, of course, our students how they feel about that. Sulaiman, maybe we'll start from you. Uh, how do you um, feel about such uh, about studying in such diverse group of people? And how is your experience with that? Bye. Uh, I have many different, many friends from different countries. Like for instance, like if we go so far, there are Chinese uh, friends of mine, who's traditionally completely different and really further away from us, right? And uh, there are some people from Russia, Slavic countries. There are other people like me from Middle Eastern uh, countries. So what you see uh, in the 
during the classes, if you are working as a group and if you try to uh, make a design which is like compatible with everyone, when you think about, when you have a discussion, it's a bit, uh, let's say, you see many different perspectives because of the cultures, because of stereotypes, sometimes because of norms. And what you realize is like, actually, but uh, these many different ideas give you another perspective. So you are getting to know more about the different culture, yes, but it's not about the own knowledge. You are getting also that experiences in a group of like uh, practice space, sometimes like uh, group works. And when you do that, I can change it. Uh, even I can describe it in a way how I feel during that uh, group works, you know, because it's such a great experiences you are like having in the, the studies. Yeah, like, the best way I can say it is, but you need the experiences for sure. Well, I definitely agree uh, that you gain a lot of experience and expand your horizons. Uh, Milena, uh, I want to ask about your experience with studying in a diverse uh, group of people, considering the fact that you've been studying in different universities. Yes, uh, first of all, I would totally agree with what Suleiman said. Uh, diversity is not just something that we can learn about from books or theoretically know that cultures are different, so thus we have different habits. Um, I would say that the main point of this program that I'm studying, that is called Global Minds, is about uh, learning and experiencing this diversity. So in my cohort, the current cohort, so I'm now in the second year of the program, there is 35 people from 35 different countries from all over the world. And we all take classes together studying theoretically about cultural differences, uh, cultural differences among people, but also like cultures within universities, for example. So we have a chance to study about it from the books, but at the same time, we have a chance to really experience it. So you can just imagine how it looks when we have a debate about a theory in psychology. So let's say about uh, equality. And then you have 35 different people with such diverse backgrounds talking about equality. It's something that in the literature that mostly comes from this westernized developed countries. You know, so it's been really inspiring and it's been really like amazing to just be part with these people. It was also intense when you really are in the group with such group, with such diverse group of people. It's intense because sometimes you lose this. But I have been taught taught in my culture that is right way of behaving. All of a sudden I see that it's only normal in my culture. So it's been also intense, but it's a great learning experience. And what is amazing about it is that you really experience it in addition to learning the theory about it. So for me, I think that's the main reason why I chose this program. And as well, we all together moved among four different universities. So I have moved from Warsaw to Oslo in Norway. Um, of course, due to pandemic, I only visited these two, but some of my colleagues visited four universities in total or even other places with their internships. So it's a really good way of observing and experiencing uh, cultural differences in total. So I really think that if you are interested in psychology and if you are interested in this phenomenon of globalization and diversity, you should totally go for it because it brings both theoretical and practical knowledge into your life. Thank you, that sounds wonderful and it's definitely a good way uh, to learn and experience other countries. Well, I have to say that the webinar comes to an end, so you have last few minutes to ask some questions in the chat box. And in the meantime, I want to ask my students here, my um, guests, is there anything that you would like to say for to future students? Maybe you have some advices. I would like to start with Vera. Yeah, absolutely. So not to be redundant, but don't be scared of challenges. Don't be scared of the unpredictable, especially now, and keep an open mind. 
uh, open to diversity, open to different cultures. And remember, once again, ask questions. There are no stupid questions. The only stupid questions are the ones you already know the answer to. So please take advantage of the admissions office because they're wonderful and they will guide you uh, through the whole process. And good luck, everyone. That is very true. Milena, how about you? Yes, uh, I'm not really sure how much time we have left, but I also just want to, to mention, because I've seen in the most frequent questions that we receive, there are questions about visas and question about accommodation and student life in Warsaw. And Vera has already mentioned that Warsaw is a really nice city for living. It has a really good public transportation network. So I really think that you should not be scared about looking for accommodation, you will get a total support from the university as well when it comes to that. And as well, when it comes to visas, visa process always depends on which country you are coming from and which country you want to go to study. But the university will issue all of the necessary doc documents that you need to, to apply for this process. So don't be afraid of it. At the same time, uh, I just want to invite you to check so for Global Minds, you can follow us on LinkedIn and Instagram and you can find all of the necessary information or you can just get in touch with us and ask whatever you need to know. We are more than happy to, to advise you and hopefully we will have a chance to meet in person next summer as well. So good luck. Suleiman, last but not least. <laughs> Actually, most of, uh, most of the things I wanted to say, Vera and Milena already said, but what I can say, like, uh, I, I certainly agree with them, and I say, don't afraid of anything. If you like to, if you wonder even, like, if you have that little bit of spark, just make it a fire, you know? Just don't afraid to move, don't afraid to ask, and uh, as we say, the office will help you about everything, all the process, but you should first to have the courage to do to you should take the first step and after taking the first step like everything comes easily like also about the poland like uh, that's we are in the middle of the european union like geographically we are exactly in the middle actually and uh, when you come here if you like to live a student life and just like uh, go to any other countries, as Vera said before, like, it's really easy. You are taking the train, few hours later you are in Germany, and few hours later in Netherlands, and so on, wherever you like to go. And uh, I can say I pretty much lived my student life, and now we are, I'm going to be like uh, stepping up to my professional life. But uh, yeah, as I said, don't afraid, just like get in touch with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, my advice is to apply as soon as possible. <laughs> we do have limited number of places and you have to keep in mind that for some programs, seats are running very quickly. So apply as soon as possible. Don't be afraid and ask admissions office about anything. I have to also talk uh, roughly about the uh, scholarship because uh, we also get questions about that from what I can see. Um, well, of course, you can apply for a scholarship. We do have a scholarship dedicated to international candidates, which covers the first year of the tuition fee. In order to apply for the scholarship, uh, there is a specific section uh, in the application form where you have all detailed information. However, you have to submit an essay uh, based on topic that is written down in regulations and uh, upload certificates that confirm that you have undergo some um, extra activities in sports, culture, etc. Um, and you have to submit your application for verification. Um, so that's about the scholarship we have to end right now. Uh, I want to thank you so much for participating in this online meeting with me and our students with Vera, Milena and Suleiman. And of course, I want to thank my guests for sharing their experience and their thoughts. Uh, thank you once again for participating in this webinar. 
Uh, we hope that we answered most of your questions regarding the application process, studies, and so on. Please remember that, that if you have any questions, then you can contact us via email, phone, and you can also book an online meeting with, uh, with us. We will be more than happy to guide you through the admissions process. And as I said before, you can also contact our students, Vera, Milena, and Suleiman. So that will be it for today. Thank you once again and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye.